Hello, um, I thought I'd read you a slightly longer book. So this is a chapter book by Roald Dahl. I won't read all of it today. Uh, I'll read it in chapters or stages. This is The Twits. You might have heard this one before or maybe seen a film. So chapter one is Hairy Faces. There they are. What a lot of hairy faced men there are around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He'd rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. Hmm. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be as big a job as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this. How often do all these hairy faced men wash their faces? Is it only once a week like us on a Sunday night? And do they shampoo it? Hmm. Do they use a hair dryer? Do they rub hair tonic on it to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to a barber to have their hairy faces cut and trimmed? Or do they do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nail scissors? Hmm. I don't know. But next time you see a man with a hairy face, which you probably will as soon as you step out onto the street, Maybe you will look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. This is chapter two, Mr. Twit. There he is. Mr. Twit was one of these hairy faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes and his nose, was covered in thick hair. The stuff even sprouted in revolting tufts out of his nostrils and his ear holes. Mr. Twit felt that this hairiness made him look terrifically wise and grand. But in truth, he was neither of these things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit. And now at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face didn't grow smooth and, ma and matted as it does on most hairy faced men. It grew in spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit wash this bristly nail brushly face of his? The answer is never, not even on Sundays. He hadn't washed it for years. Hmm, it's not very hygienic, is it? Chapter three is dirty beards. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a bit smudgy if it isn't washed as often enough. And there's nothing so awful about that. But a hairy face is a different matter. Things cling to hairs, especially food. Things like gravy go right among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe our smooth faces with a flannel and we quickly look more or less all right again. But the hairy faced men cannot do that. We can also, if we're careful, eat our meals without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy men. Watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch and you'll notice that even if he opens his mouth very wide, it is impossible for him to get a spoonful of beef stew or ice cream and chocolate sauce into it without leaving some of it on the hairs. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there were always hundreds of bits of old breakfast ugh, and lunches and suppers sticking to the hairs around his face. Ugh. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those off with the back of his hand ugh, or on his sleeve while he was eating. I hope you don't do that. It's not good table manners, is it? <laughs> But if you looked closely, not that you'd ever want to, you would see tiny little specks of dried up scrambled egg stuck ugh, to the hairs and spinach and tomato ketchup and fish fingers and minced chicken livers and all the other disgusting things Mr. Twit liked to eat. Hmm. If you looked closer still, hold your noses, ladies and gentlemen. If you peered deep into the mustachy bristles sticking out over his upper lip, you would see some much larger objects that had escaped the wipe of his hand. Things that had been there for months and months, like a piece of <laughs> oh, maggoty green cheese or mouldy old cornflake 
or even the slimy tail of a tin sardine. They're little fish if you don't know what sardines are. That is disgusting. Because of all of this, Mr Twit never really went hungry. By sticking out his tongue and curling it sideways to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here and there to nibble on. What I'm trying to tell you is that Mr Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an extremely horrid old man, as you will find out in a moment. And there he is eating. And this is all of the bits of food around his mouth. Absolutely disgusting. And chapter four, I'll read you next time. That is Mrs Twit, so we get to meet her as well. Ooh. So I hope you enjoyed that. Not sure I did. Uh, but yeah, I'll read the rest tomorrow. See you later.